Is your GitHub portfolio helping you land job interviews and offers? Or is it maybe causing people to run away in fear, screaming? GitHub portfolios are all the rage these days. And if yours is not helping you land an interview or land a job, that's a huge problem as a junior developer. See, there are three things that will help you set your portfolio apart from everybody else who's trying to get an interview or trying to get a job. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how to fit all three of those tips into just one project that you'll be able to use to help land better interviews and better job offers. Hey, Junior Devs, Dev Mentor Dave here, helping you bridge the gap from learning to code to launching a successful career. So how do you know if your GitHub portfolio is actually being helpful or hurtful to your job interview process? Well, typically, if there isn't any conversation or feedback regarding your portfolio, that's probably a good sign that it's either not impacting it at all or it's actually impacting it negatively. So how do we go about getting an employer to take our portfolio seriously? One of the things that I've noticed about junior developers and their GitHub portfolios as they're coming out of boot camps or other training facilities is they all pretty much seem to look the same. They're all very basic. They all um, kind of have the similar projects. They have the same ideas. They have the same kind of layouts. It's uh, There's a lot of the same going on amongst those who are going through those different programs. It's perfectly understandable why this is the case. Of course, those boot camps and those career learning centers are all putting out the same product over and over and over again. And so all of these junior devs are going to have pretty much the same type of GitHub. Now, there might be some differences here and there in, in style and, and uh, pictures and things like that that you might see in different people's GitHub accounts, but you're going to see the same types of things. And that really is the first point. If you're going to stand out, you need to do something different. It needs to not be the same three, four, five applications that are very small, that that really don't do hardly anything. You need something that's going to stand out. You need something that's more than just a tutorial that you followed or more than just something that you did in class or something that you did with a, another group of people there going through your boot camp. You need something that is different, that stands out, that is unique. You want something that's going to catch the eye of the interviewer or the gatekeeper to getting an interview. You want something that's going to look interesting when they click on your profile and they see all those different projects that you have. Now you might be thinking, I, I have other things that are different. I've put new things into my GitHub account since then. Isn't that enough? Well, not really. I've looked at a lot of junior developer GitHub accounts. And one of the things I've noticed apart from them all looking very similar is that even when you do find something unique, there's not the care there oftentimes to make sure that it's something that actually I can understand and that I can, uh, I can pull down that I can run that I can make it work the way that I think that it should work based on the information. Oftentimes there's not a readme or if there is one, it's just, it's very vague. It doesn't give me any instructions to actually deploy the project or to, uh, make it run or tell me what it's supposed to do. It's just kind of, vague information or it's boilerplate information uh, from a framework or something like that. So it's not just enough to be different. It also needs to be deployable. Somebody needs to be able to take your repo and put it on their machine and know exactly what commands they need to run to get it started, be able for it to open up and for it to run, whether that's a, a desktop application or whether that's a website or a web application, they need to be able to actually deploy it and actually use it. There's nothing worse than trying to look at a junior developer's code base and not actually be able to test anything. Now, does that mean it has to be perfectly finished? No, absolutely not. It's probably project that you're still working on and that's perfectly fine but when you give that repository to somebody for them to see for them to look at for a potential job you need to make sure that everything is in place so that they can understand it they know what it's for they know how to run it and they can actually use it and it doesn't produce bugs or errors it doesn't have any issues it does everything that you say it should be doing so your github projects are different and they're deployable 
But there's one more thing that's really, really important if you want it to help you be successful in your job interview, if you want it to be successful in, in landing that job offer. Several years ago, we interviewed a developer who we thought had knowledge of some new technology that we wanted to introduce to the company. And as we were interviewing this person, we began to realize that they really didn't have the knowledge that they said that they did, the knowledge that they had on their resume, and even knowledge based on repositories that they had sent us. See, unfortunately, in the dev world, sometimes people lie. Sometimes they mislead you because they're trying to get a job. First of all, don't ever do that because it's not going to look good on you and you will probably be found out. But the more we interviewed this person, we asked questions, we realized she really didn't know what she was talking about. And so when we got down to the question, do you actually know this framework? She said, well, I have knowledge of it. <laughs> well, we don't want to just have knowledge of a certain thing, especially our own projects. We want to actually be able to talk about it. We want to discuss the projects that we have. If your projects are different, if they're deployable, and you can discuss the different things that you did on the project, the different choices that you made in a framework or the choices that you made in the different types of functionality that you included in it, all these different things give you a leg up on someone else who just has a bunch of applications that they developed in bootcamp. You need to be able to answer why you did certain things in your project. You need to be able to explain the goals and the purpose and why you built that project. And most of all, you need to show the passion that you have for that project and for the code that you're writing. So your GitHub project needs to be different, it needs to be deployable, and it needs to be discussable. You need to be able to talk about it. So how do we actually do all that? Well, the best way is simply to create your own project. Come up with an idea of something that you want to use, an application that you want to develop, something that you think would be helpful to your daily life. Maybe it's not just another to-do list, but maybe it's something that you need to keep track of for yourself personally. Maybe there's some sort of automation that you would like to build into your life that Maybe it doesn't work for everybody else, but that doesn't matter. It's something that's a passion for you. And it's something that you can use then to build a project that you can be proud of, that you can actually give to somebody that is different from everything everyone else is giving them. It's something that you've made sure actually works because you want it to work for yourself. And so it's deployable. And because you've built it from scratch, you know every square inch of it. And so you can absolutely discuss it. You can talk about anything that they want to talk about. And when you go into an interview and you have those three things going for you based on your repository and you can actually talk about it and you can actually interact with people, you have a much higher win rate in your interview process and in your job offers because that's what employers are looking for. They're not just looking for people who have knowledge. They're looking for people who are willing to learn, who are willing to grow, and who can demonstrate that they not only have done that, but that they want to continue doing that and that they have a passion for it. If you're still struggling to find a job as a junior developer after you've left your boot camp, have you considered maybe doing a developer internship? If so, not all internships are created equal. Check out this video here to learn the warning signs so that you can spot a bad internship a mile away. Hey, if you like this content, could you click the like button so that YouTube will send it to more people? Click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified the next time that we upload a video. Thanks for spending time with me today and I'll see you on the next one.